nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, we're here. I, I, I missed you, man. That we're in Washington, D.C. That's for right. For a celebration of exploration. Exploration. So what does exploration mean to you? Well, so I'm getting an award. You are. <laughs> what else? For an you? explorer. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. But I, 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 I don't explore. And then I realized, kind of I do. Yeah. Because, the, you know, Earth's surface has been explored. Yes. And now we're in the realm of ideas and concepts. I so, think you're a poet, you know, you're a science communicator, so you explore through your love of language and your love of science. I love language. I mean, yes. that's language is, is an access into your soul of curiosity. I, I agree. And, and it allows you to, to think about the world in new ways. And this is what a poet does. Yes, they say, exactly. here's something you've taken for granted your whole life. Uh -huh. Now you are compelled to look at it and think about it in a whole new way. I agree. In fact, I, I don't need a poet to... Describe something that's already extraordinary. You don't need a poet? Not to describe something that's, order, order, that's already yeah. extraordinary. I, yes. What I want a poet to do yeah. is take something that I am taking for granted. Take, some, take something that, that I've forgotten how to be interested in, impressed by. I believe so. And then there, elevate there, there, that. There, there's a line by Charles Darwin which talks about the importance of hijacking our attention in order to awaken the mind's attention yes. from yes. the lethargy of custom and the film of familiarity. And what he says He said is, all that? No, he said atten <laughs> attention, if sudden and close, graduates into surprise, and this into astonishment, and this into stupefied amazement. I would say what so, transcends all of that yes. is wonder. Wonder, yes. Well, Carl Sagan coined the term wonder junkie. Would you say you're One, a wonder I'm, junkie? I'm a wonder junkie. And, Me and, too. Me and too. Me too. If you can only be a legit wonder junkie yeah. if you can spill some of that wonderment into others. Oh, you have to. You have to. Otherwise, you can't wonder by yourself. <laughs> oh, I got one, another one for you. What's so, that? Ernest Beckler. Oh, here comes, here comes. Yeah, yeah. Ernest Beckler wrote The Isle of Death. Mm -hmm. He said that the difference between the artist and the neurotic is the following. Both of them take in the world with incredible intensity, but the neurotic chokes on his introversions. He's overwhelmed, right? Oh. Whereas the artist takes in the world, reworks it, and outputs it as a work of art. So it's how we respond to kind of overwhelming universe that ultimately determines whether we can make peace with the terrifying incongruity, incongruity of mortal beings who are aware that they are mortal. Exactly. Not only that, he, here, I agree with what he just said. <laughs> so, well, so, thank you. Here, this room is filled with explorers. Yes. I mean, we have James Cameron is back there somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah, he's back there. Yes. Uh, probably that little tuft of gray hair there. Uh, <laughs> He's here because, as you know, yes. he's not just a movie maker. Right. The guy has been to the bottom of the ocean. The deepest recess. The yes. deepest. Yes. And so, and of course, at the National Geographic Society party, yeah. and that's yeah. all they care about, think about, is exploration. Excellent. Excellent. Without it, we might as well just move back to the cave, because that's, right. that's where we started before the some of us yeah. stepped out, yeah. while others are saying, no, don't go. Right. You might die. Yes, some of them died. Well, that, that, that's the human so, condition. Some of them though. died. We didn't stay in the caves. We haven't stayed, stayed on the, the cave. Plan, we won't stay with the limitations of biology. And I can tell you this. Yes. Whatever we send out to explore, even if it's robots, yeah. I love me some robots, but nobody ever gave a ticker tape parade to a robot. Fair enough. Fair no, enough. Nobody ever <laughs> asked a robot to write their memoir after coming back from their trip. That's, that's right. That's what I'm saying. That's right. Well, one day the robots will write memoirs. No, I don't want that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. Yeah, no, you're right. Maybe an AI robot will have such inspiration. But I mean, I mean, here's the thing. When we send a rover to the surface of Mars, it's a, in a way, it's our technological exoskeleton. Because yes. we're not there physically, but our mind is there. And we're there on a joystick. And, yes. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and we can reflect and contemplate the significance of crawling the surface of Mars However, because of this extension of I got mind. you. However, here's something. Yeah. Because I'm older than you. You are. Here's one I think you missed. You and ready? wiser. No, oh, no. Here's one you might think you missed. You ready? Yeah, tell me. There was a rover yeah. on the moon before humans landed there. It was okay. a Russian rover. Okay. There were other landers and wow. other robotic emissaries on the moon but no one gave a rat's ass because humans were going to the moon and the humans had names they had school teachers they had loved ones they had hometowns and each of them have high schools named after them today fair enough so fair enough. no one you if you had the comparison yeah. of who you're going to pay attention to yeah the rover or the human yeah. it's the human that's what i'm saying fair enough fair enough so maybe we need to eventually we need to send ourselves in body to, to, to Mars yeah. and to other Yeah, and by the way, don't get me wrong. The, the full poetic impact or the visceral exactly. impact of seeing a person there. Yes, and yeah. not only that, you're, you're the, the uh, what was I going to say? Um, 
brain no. fart. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. So I forgot what I was gonna say. No, too, no. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, all good. Uh, yes, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. Well, listen, it's beautiful to see you. Thank you for what you do in the world. Thank you for bringing wonder and curiosity to so many millions of people across the planet. Look, you I are got one good, of my heroes. I, you are a rock star, and I appreciate you. I got good material. What to do with the universe is good material to work with. That is a lot of good material. Now you got the brain to work with. Yeah. That's even better material. Okay, so I'm going to leave you with one At last, least we understand the universe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The we brain. Do, we do. Here's but, the thing. Um, how do we deal with existential panic like how do we deal with the unknown unknown how do we deal with the cosmic infinite you know because that, that for me is an issue like I'm overwhelmed by infinity I'm overwhelmed by my own finitude. Okay. how do you deal with that so we're not trained to think about infinities right uh, you know we're, we're trained as, as Richard Dawkins comment yeah. often says you know our faculties our sensory system yeah. is tuned to just not get eaten by a lion in, right. in Serengeti or wherever. Right. Okay. Right. So, so, so to contemplate infinity, the yeah. vastness of the universe, to contemplate reality as brought to us by the methods and tools of science, rather than by our own senses, can be mind blowing. It's a lot to take in. It's a lot to take in. No. So I think exactly. you just do it a little bit at a time, what, one day at a time. I didn't come into this world saying. Yes, cosmic infinity, right. that's me. Right. No, you learn about it. You learn how big is the universe. It's bigger yeah. than anything you yeah. thought. Well, how big is that? Can you analogize it? How how, how deep is time? The fact how, that we can even do that, the fact that we can fathom all. those concepts at in all. mind, this is what blows my mind. Ross Anderson, he wrote an article about the Hubble Space Telescope. He said it, the images from the Hubble Space Telescope allow us to mainline space and time through the optic nerves. Yes. and right? what I, Literally, I, like we're mainlining space and time through our eyeballs. I think of Hubble you, yeah. having, of having turn the universe into our backyard. <laughs> that just step out and say, yep, that's up there, that's me, that's and, us. And, well, so you're going to love this. So when we actually look at the deep field images of the universe, those images distill the complex abstractions of astrophysics into singular expressions of color and light. Yes, they do. Vindicating Keats' famous couplet, beauty is truth, truth is beauty. So at in least, the end, the universe, the universe reveals us to ourselves. At least the universe is that. <laughs> I love you, bro. Great to Dude! see you. Dude! All right, always good to see you. Don't be a stranger. No, I All won't. Right. I won't. Peace, guys. We out. <laughs>